Uh, eight people now under arrest in the killing of a police officer in Northern California, including the suspect's brothers and his girlfriend. Police say the man who killed Officer Ronel Singh is an illegal immigrant and a member of a violent Mexican street gang. ICE officials say, however, they were unaware of the suspect until his arrest last week, and critics are blaming the state's sanctuary policies. Bob Bianchi, former Morris County, New Jersey prosecutor, criminal defense attorney, joins us now. Bob, uh, I do not have the words, frankly. I do, but I won't say them on television to say how I feel about this case. You have this uh, illegal immigrant allegedly charged with this horrible killing, and he was here, and the critics say that if the sanctuary state policy was not in place, he would have been caught. There he is, uh, Ariga. He would have had two DWIs. If they were legally able to ask him and, and, and cuff him and boot him, he would have been kicked out of this country. And the brave officer, Ronel Singh, who himself, in contrast, law-abiding immigrant from Fiji, whose dream was to become a police officer, a member of law enforcement, he is shot to death, allegedly, by uh, this uh, Ariga. What an offense against what this country represents, yeah. period. Yeah, Eric, listen, when I was prosecutor, gangs were my number one priority. And I have a little bit of a different take on this because we used many of the undocumented people who were law-abiding, if you will, they weren't committing crimes, as our witnesses, as our people that were giving us intelligence in order to eradicate those that were here illegally and committing massive crime, typically in the very communities that the sanctuary state is supposed to protect. So what I don't like about this dialogue, Eric, is that we need a moderate approach. Law enforcement should be able to work with federal law enforcement partners, state law enforcement partners, to go after these gangs. We don't have enough resources to deport everybody. Let's concentrate on them because they are committing crimes, not just in those communities. They bleed out into the suburbs with burglaries and all sorts of other violent crime. So it's unfortunate that this issue gets mired in politics as opposed to sensible law enforcement policy and he pays the price this officer and many of have some really really bad cases with people that were deported they come back in they're deported they come back in one in particular a five-year-old boy abducted from a fair brutally raped and then murdered but again I don't think that we should be having policies that just say that we arrest everyone local law enforcement should not be involved in my opinion in deportation process but in the sanctuary city policy you're saying should be tailored it is tailored to, to criminals that if you uh, break the law uh, you should be deported versus just being a just asking, uh, you know, are you what, what's your citizenship? Are you here legally or not? Eric, that's a great, great question. And I was researching this. The sanctuary state law in California does not prevent them from being able to interdict with violent criminals. My question is, having been the head prosecutor, what directives are out there from the head law enforcement agencies that are telling them how to interpret that policy? And the only reason I say that is because the sheriff came out and made a blanket statement that something that was done prevented them from being able to eradicate this individual prior to him killing this beautiful man. We saw the picture with his wife and his baby. What was that exactly? Because the law doesn't prevent there it. Are, there are 800 exemptions in the sanctuary laws that would let officers actually have picked this guy up. Mm -hmm. because exactly. Of, and he fell completely through the cracks. Well, that's, that's, so you're saying the law would have worked would have worked if it had been carried out properly by authorities. Absolutely. So you know, just so you understand how this works and so your audience understands this, there's a law, but then you have law enforcement like the attorney general and head county prosecutors like myself. I had 44 police agencies. I could tell them, yeah, that's the law, but we are going to do it this way, that way, and the other way. And that could, in fact, be what uh, tied his hands and why he made that comment. This is what we need an investigation to find out. Was he prevented from using the law for those 800 exemptions, and ultimately that led to this officer's How death? How can someone realistically expect, if you're an officer on the beat, you're out on the street, you have a car stop, that you know all the 800 exemptions? Yeah, I mean, I mean somebody could carry a big book and go through it while you stop somebody. I mean, how does how would that work? Well, I think the the issue is is that you want to get him off and out of circulation prior to that motor vehicle stop. Yeah. If in fact he was a gang member, which we're told that there's social media accounts, so on and so forth, then state, local, and federal authorities, there's nothing. This does not violate the sanctuary state laws we've been talking about. Should be working to interdict these against these individuals, so that he wouldn't have been on the road confronting that police officer. These this violence from gangs. 
from 2007 when I was prosecutor to 2013 grew exponentially. And Eric, it's a big issue. We need to stop the political dialogue that the left is pulling to the left, the right's pulling to the right. And in the middle is law enforcement being stretched in multiple directions, and we can't do our job under these circumstances. Meanwhile, let me just show you one more time uh, uh, Corporal Runnels saying he uh, handled the canine uh, uh, issue in Newman. Police department, he is the first and only police officer who, of that department who was shot in the line of duty. Bob, I know you join us and all our viewers in thinking and keeping his family in our thoughts and prayers. Thank you. Heather? Yeah, his wife and his five-month-old child.